Thanks for joining us here on our fourth episode of sort of the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes of history or too complicated for history uh, recap show. We just listened to episode four with Karen Bloom, who talked about Katie Green and Nathaniel Green. Really, she talked about a lot, but Katie Green is her specialty. I have two questions I want to ask you guys to kick us off here. And the first one is, uh, she said she didn't like this expression, but I actually really loved it. She said, history is not a foreign country, right? which is awesome. What she's really getting at is, you know, the things that we think happened 250 years ago are from a different time, a different place. They're almost unrelatable by today's standards. And that just continuously is not true. It seems to be something that could have happened yesterday as much as it could have happened 250 years ago. So, you know, one thing that she was talking about was how Katie Green was very desired. It seems that everywhere she went, everyone wanted to be with her and, and, and was fancied, uh, you know, fancied her. You know, in our docuseries, we talk a lot about George Washington and the influences he had with the powerful women in history. I'm curious, like by today's standards, if we saw a man and a, and a woman that he was not with or not supposed to be with or someone else's wife or a widow or whatever, widower, like, you know, we might start to assume things. Was was that the same back then? And And if it wasn't the same or I guess what I'm saying is what did people think when they saw someone with Katie Green? or Washington with Katie Green? Was he was his image enhanced by his relationship with her or, or her? Or I, I don't know. You, let me toss it over to you guys. Well, I think the first thing I would say is that, that George Washington was known to befriend intelligent women. He, I mean, Martha. Martha was intelligent. She was also quite... Uh, forthright. She was stubborn. She was strong, which I think he was attracted to women like that because his mother was just like that. And so I think he was looking for women who could um, sort of stand by him as equals intellectually, um, you know, and in other ways. And so I think Katie Green, I think everybody, men and women, wanted to be around her. I think she was super charming. She was extroverted. Um, she was very social. And I think, you know, everyone wanted to be around her. So why not George Washington? Um, there might have been some whispers back then. I don't think to the extent that they are now. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, they they dance together and therefore, um, you know, they must be having an extramarital affair. But but like Karen said, dancing was fancy walking. It was not the way we dance today. So it's it's very different than if you're thinking of them in like a nightclub. <laughs> that is not what was happening. It was very much a, a formal occasion of the upper classes. And so, you know, in that way, I would say that, you know, people get the wrong impression today. And I think there might have been whispers back then, but I don't think it would have been the big scandal that people today would like it to be because everyone loves a good history scandal. Um, and I just don't think it was there back then. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, like, I don't, I don't know too much about the, like explicitly about the history, but you know, we are in today's society actively searching for the new, the new gossip, you know, the new tea. Um, in a world where reality TV is humans just causing drama for the sake of drama. And we're watching, you know, I don't want to say quote unquote high society, but I don't want to say that just typically wealthy or affluent people um, who are, who we just watch to see what, what happens in their lives. Right. And so it's like, if, if you see a celebrity with another celebrity, Oh my gosh, that, that must be, it, you know, it must be something like, I, I don't know if it's, we need more drama today. Uh, I don't know if it's just kind of how society has evolved. Um, it is funny that you brought up, you know, history as a foreign country because I'll, like their, their interactions and stuff actually feel like a foreign country. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's, it is, I, I understand why, why, why Karen said 
uh, she doesn't like that statement because things are so similar yet different. Um, <laughs> to, to quote a a uh, a real film, the interview, uh, the same <laughs> but different. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's a oh, great movie. Goodness. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, very historically accurate. It yeah. is not. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it it is, it is just, you know, that's just one of the fun things of our job is learning how similar things are and yet how different, not alien, because they don't feel alien, but mm. like they are just different times, man. I mean, even, even with my parents' generation or our parents' generation, um, well, not you, Jordan, um, and uh because i'm old yeah <laughs> way yeah so old you know like i feel like your you know your your parents were probably grandpa in the, jordan you know hanging out with george and and, and katie and nathaniel <laughs> jesus um, yeah, yeah. Um, so i uh yeah i it, it is it is really cool to see things are different but the same yeah i agree i think that you know in in the larger sense it's not a foreign country because these things happen again and again and again, and you can always see relevance. I think where that can come into play is sort of the customs and the norms. I think if I were to go back to, to George Washington's time, even with how much I know, it would probably take me about 30 seconds to put my foot in my mouth and they would be horrified by something I said or did, you know, and they would probably cast me out. And so I think in that way, you know, that would be similar for, you know, when I've traveled abroad and also end up doing something stupid because I don't know what's what the custom is. So in that right. way, or like on it, yesterday's call, yeah. I guess, you know, you'd kind Oh, of every day. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> come on now. The world is a foreign country to me. Yes. Yeah, so I think in that way, in the customs and in how you're supposed to behave in that way, I would see it as a very different place. Even if you don't want to say foreign country, it's just a very different world. Well, you know, I, there's a, an, a modern day expression. Well, I, I be, I've heard it in modern day because I exist in modern day. Um, <laughs> which just is, barely. Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straddling. Uh, I'm straddling a lot of history here. Um, yeah. You know, the expression is behind every great man is an even better woman. Right. We, we say that. And, you know, I don't know if that's sort of been the mantra of you know, equal rights for women and this equal pay and, and a lot of stuff that's coming up. And I think has always been around, but is really being shouted from the rooftops in modern day. But that feels like that could just as easily have been an expression from the 18th century when I was listening to this episode. You know, um, you got into the cotton gin and the last third of the episode there. And it seems like uh, Katie Green obviously had a lot to do with that. And I can only imagine because in the episode we talked about the stuff that didn't make it to the history books, but were prom, but was prominent. Uh, do you think that's an 18th century expression as well? That there were probably these powerful women contributed largely to a society that history doesn't remember them doing so or chooses not to remember them doing so? Well, I'm not sure if it was ever said back then. I like to hope that it was. But I think the reasoning why back then it's so apparent is because women, married women, weren't necessarily legal. They didn't have legal identities. They were sort of subsumed under their husbands. I so, just I just want to clarify one thing that you just said. Yes. Specifically married women, not women yes. marrying women. I did. Just have the way you phrased that, it, it did sound like you said women, married women. <laughs> So I thought you were, I thought you were talking about Mary and I was like oh, I don't okay. think that was happening yeah. back then. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother episode cuz that was not Right, 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 of. exactly. Yeah. Um, that, but anyway, that's for this show, the, the <laughs> that's a whole nother version of the show. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole that's, nother that's episode. That's behind our Patreon. Cuz that is yes, cuz that is not unheard of. <laughs> uh, but legally, yes. So, for example, with with Katie Green, even if she had completely invented the cotton gin on her own as a woman, she could not patent it. So, women did not have the abilities legally to do, you know, whatever it is they might want to do. And so their husbands would likely get credit for things such as this. And, you know, for that, it was it was Eli Whitney, who wasn't her husband, but nevertheless was a man who had also worked on um, the machine. And so 
it's different today because, at, you know, at least even married women can have their own identities. We're not assumed to be in the same agreement on everything as our husbands. They don't go and vote with the assumption that, oh, of course, we all agree. So only one, only he needs to vote. Um, but I like to think that certainly with Martha Washington and George, I think she was a huge asset to him in every aspect of their marriage. And certainly Katie Green was as well uh, for Nathaniel. But I think it's about the legal identity of women not being able to receive credit. And part of that is also why they're missing from the, the history books, because they also weren't serving in government. So you have all these doc, you know, government documents to find out what people were doing, where they were, and the women are absent because they're not allowed to serve in Congress. They're not allowed to be president. Um, so they've largely been hidden. And that's why, you know, the research that Karen is doing or, you know, the research on Martha Washington is so awesome because it's stuff that we haven't heard. Uh, but I'd like to hear the the married man, Patrick, talk about the, the great men with with greater women behind them. Patrick. Yeah. Uh, as Jordan <laughs> likes to say, Mr. I Doctor? am the, yes, I am. Yes, I am Mr. <laughs> Doctor. Uh, my wife took my last name and I took her prefix. Um. <laughs> It is, it is really interesting. And I, and I think that, you know, looking back and the more we learn that the, the social interaction between men and women has been a lot more equal than the history books present as far as, you know, the, um, the guidance or, um, what's the, the word here? Um, like not cabinet, but, um, just someone, someone helping you, advisory or oh, advisor, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Abigail Adams was, mm -hmm. and and we're learning more and more, and and I am too because you know, as I've learned more about U.S. history, it progresses from Washington to Adams, and I've just been learning about these women who who were socialites, and you know, when you watch, you know. And this is me pulling like pop culture references, but you know, when you watch Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. the women aren't technically the ones legally in power. In fact, sometimes it's male children who are in power. But it's really the women controlling. And I don't want it to come off as like uh such a negative form, right? It's it's more that like women were more equal in in their ability to understand things mm -hmm. than it's than it's presented. And I think Lynn made a great point saying that like the legality of it left them out of the official documentation. Um, and Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong, but there used to be a lot of women who would attend Congress, right? Who weren't officially voting, but would be with congressmen. Um, well, there were, they could be in sort of the galley and they could okay. watch some aspects, some votes and things like that. Um, but there were also a lot of secret meetings as well that would only include the members. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. So not quite as like advisory as I'd hoped, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it is, it is, I, I can tell you from my personal experience to kind of find an answer Lynn's question. I am much better with my significant other, right? She is the best and she's smarter than me, <laughs> um, for sure. And, uh, without her, I'm definitely not able to to be the best version of myself. And I like to think that we, we have that for each other. And I don't think that that is unique to our time. Right. Um, you know, they talk about it in the episode, like how general green is a different human when his wife is around than when she's not, you know, we learn that that's also the case for George, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's, and in the history books, sometimes it's presented as, you know, he didn't like his wife or, you know, they had a spat, and so right. people take that as a na like a, a defining moment of of their relationship. When it's like you know, all three of us are are married, and we all have moments with our significant other where we have a disagreement. It's okay, um, and uh, at the end of the day, those moments. If I have a journal, and I forget the you know, I don't destroy the journal with my other stuff. Um, and someone finds it later and it's like the one entry they find is, oh, me and Ari fought, man, she can be really hard to deal with sometimes. It's like, which she's never hard to deal with. Just, just got to caveat that. <laughs> yeah. Be clear um, on that. But if they saw that, you know, 
then that becomes a defining moment. And so it's, it's really, this is why we study and study and study and search and search and search because we need more context. Right. You know, us having one in every 400 letters or, you know, I, I don't know what the exact ratio would be, doesn't provide full context. Mm -hmm. And perspectives on someone else's relationship from people who aren't in it are also a guiding force in some of our history telling. And so we're just, that is why yeah, the pursuit well, of history is important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what we do learn from the letters that we do have, because as you guys said, they burn most of them, um, is this admiration and affection, love, yeah. directness. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think you're, that's spot on. You know, I, I want to end it with this, this question that I just thought of when listening here is, you know, we talk about how we know that women were more involved and today are more involved, even if, you know, X, Y, Z man did something. I think we can all assume the politics behind some of the decisions that are made, right? Even with our modern day government, someone will say something and the people will talk amongst themselves and say, well, we know why he did that. He's a businessman and he's really trying to do this and blah, blah, blah. We're a little bit more informed about the political reasons that people do something or the public facing reasons that people do something. Was that true in the 18th century? Like, okay, maybe Eli Whitney got the, you know, the credit. Let me use a different example. We know that X person man got the credit for why political decision but would the people of the time have said yeah well i know his wife and you know i bet she had something to do with it too or my wife would have said something to me and i would have gotten credit like did they were they aware that behind great men were great women in that time they must have if they had those types of great women in their lives as well Oh, I would think absolutely, because you're talking about the upper society. And even if they're not all getting together in Congress, they're having parties, they're having dinners, they all know each other. They're all friends, frenemies, enemies, you know, all, all the things we are today. And I think they would be very well aware of the wives. And um, also the wives would, they would, they could talk politics, they just wouldn't do it in public. And even, um, you know, Elizabeth Willing Powell, she would have her um, salons and they would talk about politics. And it was understood that she was accepted to talk about politics. She was a brilliant lady and um, we'll have an episode on her as well. Um, and so, yeah. Actually, our next episode. Yes, our next, next episode, episode on Elizabeth Willing Powell. Featuring um, Sam Snyder. And so, yeah, Snyder. yes, Sam Snyder, Mount Vernon. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that was very well understood. In fact, um, Dolly Madison, so James Madison, you know, everyone talks about how he was so tiny and he was very quiet too. He would sort of sit in the corner at parties. Um, it was basically Dolly who was going out there and getting things done. So she would be the one who would set up the meeting. She was the one who was schmoozing. Um, she was the one who was, who was sort of the face of James Madison because that just wasn't his thing. He was an introvert and he wanted to sit and read his books. And so, you know, these are the things that women did that didn't make it into the documents. Um, there, there are actually some great books on them. People have found <laughs> sources to be able to share these stories. Um, but absolutely. And also there's this idea that, that it was the women's job to teach the children, like, you know, okay, well, they're at home. The children are their responsibility. Well, if they have sons, they have to teach the sons how to be a good citizen and become a good American and be able to vote. So they had to know enough to then teach their their children, especially their sons, how to, you know, be a good citizen. So in that way, they also had to be knowledgeable about what was going on and about what was, you know, required of being a citizen and of course, a gentleman, depending on, you know, your class. A lot of times we we're talking more about the upper classes here. Uh, but absolutely. I mean, the women, um, they weren't sort of at home sipping tea with no clue what was going on. That's that's absolutely never the case. Yeah. So, and I, I think as we humanize, you know, history, right. And that's our goal is under making sure we understand that they're people. They're not just numbers of population who just sit and stare at a wall when they're not, you know, when the husband is off doing something. There was always something to be done. You know, people are smart. 
kids are smart. They learn things, you know, very rapidly. And that's to either, you know, either gender, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I can't help but, you know, think about George Washington and like how his single mother raised the father of our nation, Mm -hmm. right? And so it's not, it's not that he didn't have male influences, but he was predominantly surrounded by women who helped elevate his ability to, you know, be in these circles. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's the mother of the father of our country, you know, was, was, was a single mother. And so, yes, there had to be these, these strong women. And and again, they're just, they're not robots who just, you know, clean or change Mm -hmm. the kids and then, you know, go back to their charging station, uh, (laughs) you know, um, even though if I made that that metaphor now or then, they would be like, what's a charging station? Um, <laughs> they would go for tea, uh, yes. Yeah. You know, it's not like they would just sit there and stare at the tea and just <laughs> swirl the spoon around the edge. So, it, yeah, man, I, 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 this is the fun part, right? This is where we learn. They were just like us. And there's a lot of people today who, you know, don't get credit for how smart and savvy or hardworking or strong emotionally, you know, physically, whatever you have doing everything they can to provide and help guide people into the future. And that, that hasn't changed. Um, well said. Yeah. Yeah. Really well said. I hope our audience understands that too. I'm sure they do. This is a, a conversation that's been ongoing for what seems like hundreds of years, honestly, mm-hmm. if not more. Yeah. So um, thank you both for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, to our audience, please check out our latest episode with Karen Bloom talking about Katie Green. That is wherever you get your podcast. Too complicated for history. Uh, check it out. Thanks so much. Check it out now. Check it yeah. out. Oh, now. yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>